With a star addressing his absence from AEW and more, this is Wrestling Rambles. My name is John and you're watching the Wrestling Report. Before we move on, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Rambles with notifications on and don't forget to like the video. Revealing what he will be doing following his international travels, The Rock said this in a clip on X. Uh, so, for example, landing now in France, took a flight from Vancouver, Canada, and it was a long flight, didn't get much sleep, landed and um, changed on the plane, and now I'm headed to the gym. It's approximately, what time is it, uh, Ron, would you say? 8.35. 8.35 a.m., uh, Nice time. So, the reason why I like to do this is, we have to work in about four hours from now, and you know the alternative to going to the gym right away is you go back to the hotel. Uh, you guys know how it rolls. You go back to the hotel, you take a shower, you take a bath, you order room service, you start to exhale a little bit, your body starts to come down, and all of a sudden, before you know it, you are passed out on the couch or on the bed, completely knocked out. Your alarm goes off a couple of hours later because you gotta work. You're fucking discombobulated. <laughs> and you feel like shit. Uh, at least that's what's happened to me in the past. So I figured the best way to, I think, circumvent that and navigate my way through that is just the moment I land anywhere, anywhere around the world, doesn't matter. Uh, I hit the gym, found a great gym. Uh, I know I'm coming, we're gonna get a great workout in. And for me, what it does, it helps just reset your body. It also helps, I think, anchor uh, your body in to uh, keeps me alert too as well uh, and now I'm gonna train after now am I tired fuck yeah I'm tired I'm really fucking tired I'm always tired um, but today's a big day of work it's a big day of business uh, as we go to Cannes in the film festival uh, for Smashing Machines so you know I want to be alert ready to go um, it's a big day so landing that's my that's my advice is when you guys travel you land i know it's a pain in the ass i know you're tired but if you can hit the gym sort of some sort of physicality um reset your body reset your clock uh and then you're ready to go and i know the million dollar question you guys want to know uh is rock do you speak french well i do not speak french however I kiss that way. <laughs> you like that, Rod? Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Quite good, too, from what I'm told. <laughs> You're welcome. When it comes to the progress of a WrestleMania 40 documentary, Ringside News said WWE WrestleMania 40 shattered numerous company records and earned accolades as one of the most remarkable shows in history, prompting eager anticipation for its documentary release. However, fans have been left waiting and recent reports suggest that Dwayne The Rock Johnson may be the reason behind the delay. A standout achievement of WrestleMania 40 was its unprecedented gate surpassing previous records by a staggering 78% held at Lincoln in financial field across two nights. The event drew a whopping 145,298 attendees from all corners of the globe, solidifying its status as a cultural phenomenon on a global scale. Initially, it was speculated that the delay in the documentary's release stemmed from the extensive footage the company had to compile, yet fans remain in the dark about its eventual debut. Reports from PW Insider indicate that within WWE, there's a belief that the documentary's release is further postponed as they await final approval from The Rock. This delay isn't entirely surprising given The Rock's history. Manipulating rehearsal schedules for WrestleMania 40 and attempting to take undue credit for WWE success have already raised eyebrows within the company. As of now, the documentary's release date remains uncertain, leaving fans eagerly awaiting its arrival.
revealing what has changed for him now that he has won the AEW World Title. Swerve Strickland said this to TMZ Sports. More media, more responsibility. A lot of the things that a lot of people can get away with, I don't get away with anymore. I can't just respond to everybody online. I can't call out people like that because now there's, um, I'm representing all elite wrestling to the fullest extent. I'm not just representing myself. It's bigger than myself now. You know, all elite wrestling is not only just my culture. I've got to represent it in a certain different way and I've got to understand it's bigger than me so a lot of those selfish responses those emotions they kind of got to go to the side and understand what's the bigger picture With Gallus, the faction consisting of Joe Coffey, Mark Coffey, and Wolfgang returning to NXT this week, this was said regarding a main roster call-up for the group as Ringside News wrote, according to Fightful Select, there has been significant discussion about Gallus potentially moving to the main roster during the WWE draft with officials showing strong interest in them. Sources indicate that there is still an expectation among those familiar with the situation that Gallus will eventually be called up to the main roster in the coming months. At the last match, Pro Wrestling Rock Experience event, former WWE star Snitsky recreated his infamous WWE moment of punting a baby doll into the crowd. For an update on a return to WWE, Ringside News wrote that excitement brews among fans as reports confirm Eric Rowan's signing of a new contract with WWE and his recent appearance at the Performance Center. In light of this, the purpose of his visit has been confirmed. Eric Rowan was spotted at the WWE Performance Center in Orlando this week. Initially, specifics about his visit and future plans as fans simply wondered when he would return to WWE television. Fightful Select has corroborated PW Insider's report regarding Eric Rowan's recent visit to the WWE Performance Center. Sources indicate that Rowan was undergoing physical evaluations and training sessions in preparation for his impending return to WWE. It's worth mentioning that WWE's intriguing QR code mystery storyline is rumored to lead to the debut of a new version of the Wyatt family. This iteration is said to include Bo Dallas, Nikki Cross, Dexter Loomis, Joe Gacy, and Eric Rowan. Considering this, there's a strong possibility that Rowan's return could align with the WWE King and Queen of the Ring event scheduled for May 25th. As former AEW Women's Champion Jamie Hayter has been on the sidelines with an injury since May of last year, an update on her was provided by Sean Ross Sapp on The Hump. When she first got hurt, they just put a big to be decided on it. They had no clue. They had no idea when that was going to be up or when she was going to be back, and that's unfortunate, but I haven't heard any movement on that. Back in August, the Wrestling Observer noted that AEW expected her to be healed by February, with it remaining to be seen when she comes back to the promotion. On Instagram, Eddie Kingston would post a photo of himself in a wheelchair with his leg in a brace as he appears to be injured following his match from New Japan's event last Saturday. Falling AEW Dynamite, where he returned to replace Eddie Kingston in the upcoming Anarchy in the Arena match at Double or Nothing, Darby Allen said this to fans in attendance. What a crazy few months. Holy sh! I thought the worst happened when I broke my foot, then I was in New York and I got hit by a bus. As you can see, I'm not 100%. I still have a little bit of a limp, I got a nose brace on, but I am going to Anarchy in the Arena because I want to defend AEW's honor. Like I said, I'm not 100%. Jesus, when Dax just 
just did that suplex. I was sitting crisscross applesauce and a beam hit me in the head. I thought I got knocked out. I was like, there goes my return. I'm not going to keep you here for long because there's some more badass action to come. I got to go to the hospital or something. I'll talk to you guys later. Promoting his character being available in WWE 2K24, CM Punk would also take a shot at Drew McIntyre in this video. Good news, everybody. CM Punk is finally available for play on WWE 2K24. This is making waves on the internet, so you know Drew McIntyre is watching it. Uh, I'm part of the Punk Pack. That, that includes uh, myself and some hardcore legends from ECW like Sandman, the Dudleys, and the most hardcore legend of all, Terry Funk. Now, Drew, if you are watching this, and let's face it, it's on the internet, so you're watching it, you can finally play as your favorite wrestler and human being, me, CM Punk. Hope you have a terrible day, pal. As he has been absent from AEW programming for about a month and a half, Ricky Starks, who could see his deal with the company expire next month, said this regarding his lack of bookings for the promotion to What Culture Wrestling. I don't know. I would hope so. But I really don't know. Things are, every time I always predict something to go some way, it doesn't go that way. And it kind of just leaves me being like, well, we'll just figure out and see. I really have no clue. It's just a very interesting time, I feel like. I wish that I was on Dynamite or I wish... I wish I was on Dynasty. I wish I was on these things, but I think at a certain point, just for my own sanity, I can't go too crazy about it because the proof is in my work and my effort that I've constantly given. I've constantly given 1000% effort. So at a certain point, it's not in my control. I think that's the biggest lesson I have. Things are just not in my control, but the things that are, I try the hardest. I'm not hurt. Even that night on AEW Collision, I specifically stated, hey, I'm not hurt. I was just being cautious about it because at the moment I didn't know what was happening especially with this side of my body so I wasn't hurt I was never put on an injury list or anything like that I have no answers people ask me all the time well why aren't you I don't know I have no clue this isn't up to me it does suck obviously to not be on TV but the support in people online and people sending me messages is very very sweet and endearing and very encouraging from that standpoint During that same interview, Ricky Starks would give his opinion on CM Punk, saying, I have no issues with CM Punk. I don't give a damn what anybody tries to tell me. I don't care. He has never done me wrong, and you can have your opinions on him, but you shouldn't vilify someone for thinking differently than you. And I will say that until I'm blue in the face. He really went out of his way to really try and make something on that collision show for me, and I feel like it was working. Going back to CM Punk's call out of Drew McIntyre when promoting his character release in WWE 2K24, Drew McIntyre responded on X, writing he's in the game for one day and already hurt, and added this clip. Corner. Ah, uh, Punk counted away. Now he's going to go up to the top rope. What on earth is CM Punk got planned here? Punk looking to go for broke. Underhooks both arms. Here we go from the very top turnbuckle. The push. Drew completely out of it. Recalling her job at Hooters and how this led to her getting into the pro wrestling business, Liv Morgan told the Insight Podcast, Everyone at Hooters knew I loved wrestling. I'd be doing my bar shifts. I'd put WWE on the TV. Everybody knew it was my thing. Before my time at Hooters, there was a wrestler who will not be named who used to manage this specific Hooters. Me being the big WWE fan that I was, I saw this wrestler come into Hooters and I knew they were exactly, and I introduced myself. I talked to this wrestler for a while and I was like, I want to wrestle and they were like haha yeah and I just spit all my wrestling knowledge to them and okay you really do love wrestling so they introduced me to this man Joe DeFranco he's a world-renowned strength and conditioning coach he only trains professional athletes and he actually trained Triple H on a weekly basis so I went to his gym and he threw me right in with his NFL guys
Before that same interview, Liv Morgan recalled her early days with WWE, saying this, I felt this enormous responsibility to succeed and help my family. I kept thinking, I have to make it to WWE and change our lives. This pressure made every mistake feel like it could cost me my job. But over time, I improved steadily. It was a tough journey, much harder than I expected. Mentioning what Vince McMahon could do after he gets through the sex trafficking lawsuit against him, Dave Meltzer noted on Wrestling Observer Radio, they need to rehabilitate his image enough to where he can do business as a businessman because that's what he wants to do. Whether it's wrestling, which apparently from what I'm told, it's not wrestling, but he absolutely wants to do this. Staying on the topic of the lawsuit against WWE, Vince McMahon and John Laurinaitis, Ringside News wrote that as reported earlier, Vince McMahon has filed a motion to compel arbitration in the Grant versus WWE at all case, refuting Janelle Grant's allegations of sexual abuse, coercion, and associated claims. In response, Grant's legal team has reacted to McMahon's motion. According to Brandon Thurston, attorneys representing Vince McMahon have submitted a new memorandum in opposition to Janelle Grant's motion aimed at striking down down McMahon's prior statements, which sought to undermine Grant's credibility. McMahon's legal team contends that his previous statements offer relevant context to the motion to compel arbitration, and asserts that Grant's motion to strike lacks merit and represents the height of hypocrisy. To make things even more interesting, WWE joined Vince McMahon in filing a motion to compel arbitration as well. As all involved parties signal a shift towards arbitration, the forthcoming developments may shed light on the trajectory of the case. It remains to be seen whether the dispute will be resolved privately through arbitration or proceed toward a public trial. It would be added that attorneys representing Vince McMahon have submitted a new statement of material facts as part of their efforts to bolster their motion to compel arbitration in the ongoing sexual misconduct case involving Janelle Grant. In the document, McMahon's legal team asserts that the facts presented are undisputed and also reserves the right to introduce additional evidence related to witness credibility, sophistication, state of mind, and other pertinent issues. Key points highlighted in the court document include plaintiff Janelle Grant and McMahon had a three-year relationship that concluded around January 2022. Throughout their relationship, Grant resided in the same luxury apartment building as McMahon. Following the end of their relationship, both parties entered into a confidential settlement agreement, general release, and covenant not to sue. Before involving their respective attorneys in negotiating the agreement, Grant herself negotiated the monetary compensation, increasing it from an initial offer of $1 million to $3 million. Legal representation was secured for both parties during the drafting and negotiation of the agreement with Jonathan M. Shapiro representing Grant and Jerry S. McDevitt representing McMahon. Revealing that she is taking time off from WWE to deal with an injury, Asuka said this on her YouTube channel. After Backlash and the European tour, I had to take a break to treat my knee that I had been hurting for a while. My partners Kyrie Sane and Dakota helped me a lot during this tour as I could not move at my best. I am very grateful to both of them. While it's been reported that Natalia's WWE contract is set to run out, Sean Ross Sapp gave a brief update on this during Fightful's The Hump as he said, Natty is still set to be a free agent in a couple of weeks. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching and I will see y'all later.